Once you get that feel, you're just like feeling it. You just know it's like you get hyped. You just like hit the right chords. May sometimes you just be kind of drunk and throw your hands down on the piano. We call it the the Beirut smash, where I'll just be like magically just come up to the keyboard, put my hands in a random spot, and just hold the chords out, and it, you just vibe. Like woo! I hold my fingers there for like one minute because I don't know even where to go sometimes. go by the name of Beirut Burner out of San Francisco, California. Just moved to Oakland. Beirut was supposed to be like, I guess like a young Roo. Uh, Roo means like, I think it's like baby kangaroo or something like that. And uh, so I figured from the Bay, Roo, young guy from the Bay, Beirut. And then I uh, may or may not have had two cell phones at one point. And so my name would come up on my friend's phone, Beirut, Beirut's burner phone. He used to just call me Beirut Burner, just kind of naturally happened. first instrument was playing the drums. My dad had a drum set. And the way he taught me was he had a drum set here and then he had my, I had my little crappy drum set right here and he would just play and I would just mimic him and he would just play a certain beat and I would just play until I could match him perfectly and then we'd move on. So we'd start with the beat, get that down and he'd start to throw a fill in there. I do that a bunch of times until I could follow him and once I got it on he just kind of let me do my own thing and gave me a bunch of tapes to listen to and um, just let me kind of learn myself like zone out on headphones so I'd go to sleep just put the headphones on listening to things memorizing guitar parts and just drum parts in my head you know um, yeah I still remember that like really deeply I think about that kind of stuff all the time so I'd say it really got started with uh, Benjo Beats. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. He lived out here for a while, um, now lives in Oregon. But his brother Max used to throw these parties and I used to go to the parties all the time. And they had their own house. Even though they were in high school, they had their own house because their parents lived out of state or something like that. And so I'd go to these parties and hanging out and his older brother would always be, had like this door always shut and I always hear music coming out of it. And I always wonder what he was doing but it was just like my friend's older brother and then one day he had the door open I see him hitting the NPC or hitting pads playing the drums on him. I'm like yo you mind if I like pop my head in and then once that door shut like I never came out like party life was over I was always on that half of the room in the house now like I'm always in the studio from that As far as future releases, I got an uh, album I'm sitting on with uh, Stanley Ipkiss at the East Bay, out of Berkeley. Um, probably my favorite MC, definitely in, in the uh, Bay Area, but in general, just like it was, he was he's so he's such a dope MC. We got a group called Two Chill. Uh, I've been working on another with another MC ID out of um, Oakland. I got a, um, another project, instrumental wise collab-wise with another producer, SPLF, short for Spliff, aka the Spliff Brothers, Brother Spliffson with uh, Stone Rock, and that's all instrumental. I've been working with Today's Future Sound for maybe two years now, so I'm a senior instructor there. Um, on the weekly, I work with students that are in uh, elementary school to junior high in Oakland and surrounding areas in San Francisco, and we just teach them music production from the bottom up, from like music theory all the way up to performing live and creating their own album artwork and putting out a release for every class that we teach. At the end of it, they always get an album so they can be like, ah, oh, check me out, you know? I'm really excited to be a part of that because it's uh, teaching math and science and cultural relevance through hip hop music and music production. a lot of 
lot of people when they're starting songs, they'll use drums, right? They'll start off with, all right, let me let me get the drums down and then vibe off that. And people are like, you got to go with the drums. I'm like, I don't know why. Like people do that because to me, like you're already limiting yourself by putting drums down. You've already got a BPM down. You've already got a, a type of drum. So like, ooh, that, you put down boom bap drums, you're making a boom bap beat. You put down a fucking four on the floor, you're making a house beat, you know what I mean? You put down a trap style drum, you're making trap. I like to start off with either the keys or the sample or the melodic parts first. That way I get a feel for where it's going. Like, ooh, this is making me feel kind of emotional. I'm about to make one of them like future R&B type tracks. Having this conversation with my boy Chris Keys out of Oakland, um, one of my favorite producers and key keyboard players um, and piano players in general. And we were talking about it's all about capturing that emotion first and then figuring out where you want to go with it. Um, yeah, my live setup pretty much consists of like definitely surrounded around Ableton. Um, Ableton's my baby, you know. Like I love Ableton because you can think about like working Ableton live. You can like think about making a song when you don't even have it in front of you. Like during the day, I'm just like, oh, I'm gonna add this this effect here and I'm getting, I can already think about the arrangements and how to like I could do it live or certain effects and it's for some reason visually stimulating to enough that I can just make beats in my head without even having to look at it which is great. My Nord lead, uh, love that thing. That's pretty much my main synth. There's got a space echo. I got a bunch of rack gear here. Um, got the Ableton push recently so that's been fun to produce with. For Christmas, my dad got me this drum pad. It's called a control pad. And it does MIDI through, you play the sticks on it. And I've always done my drums like either on piano keys or pads. And it changed everything for being a drummer. Now I can play the drums out on pads with sticks. And it kind of is changing the game for me because I've been putting that into my live sets and it's letting me be like naturally who I am as a musician on stage rather than just button pushing. Feel like for a producer you have to do the keep testing the waters till whether you're just like everything's locking in like you can already hear the piano parts you can already hear the drum parts as soon as you hear one thing you're like Woof! you get that stank face like oh like we we do that all the time in here like that Ooh! once you get that or you hear that in the room you know to stick with something and to keep going for it so uh, you get that that little stink factor you're in <laughs> the chops like finding just like pitching the samples and figuring out where it's gonna go just between <laughs>
but it, it all comes you know like there was a point where I never thought I would play a live show right never thought I would win a B battle or whatever and then I won two B battles in two states twice in a row and happened to be you know like in the middle of being on tour out in the south and you know I've gone to five or six states just through music but I never thought any of that was going to happen you know uh, just those opportunities and like once you get like a taste I think that's the motivation forever <laughs>